So I've been making my way through the South and right now I'm in Georgia, just outside of the town of Ringgold. And you can't come to Georgia and you can't talk about the Civil War without talking about William Tecumseh Sherman. And today we are going to be going to the exact spot where William Tecumseh Sherman had his headquarters set up and planned the Atlanta campaign. This is so cool and I've always wanted to see this, seriously. Uh, this is an example of something called the Sherman necktie. So the Union troops, in order to uh, basically disrupt the operations in the Confederacy, were tearing up rail lines, amongst many other things, and they would pile up these railroad ties and then set the tracks on top of them, set the ties on fire, and then you can see the result as the heated metal would would bend. Now one of the problems is that you could heat this back up and straighten it out. So Sherman ordered his troops to start taking these uh, these rails and twisting them around trees and deforming them so that they could no longer be used. So cool. I wanted to show that before we got over to the house. So what we are looking at right here is the Clisby Austin House. And uh, this was built in 1848, served as a field hospital during the Battle of Chickamauga and Ringgold Gap for the Confederates. And then whenever the Confederates withdrew from this area, served as the field headquarters for William Tecumseh Sherman. Pretty cool. We're going to take a little look around this property and then go inside the house. A couple of other noteworthy structures on here that are original to the property. This is the carriage house. And right back here is the chicken house. You can see it's built a, a little bit different to promote airflow within the building. And then there was also, you know, a barn and smokehouse and some other structures here at one point, which are no longer here, but a lot of it is still all original. Pretty amazing to, to have all of that still here. Now, here's something that I found kind of interesting that I'd really never seen before. This is a cattle gate. So if you're living on a cattle farm and you don't want cattle in your yard, you take advantage of the fact that cattle have limited movement in their spines, and you put in one of these. Pretty cool. So we just walked into the house here and uh, this first room that we're looking at is the living room. And uh, you can see they've got a couple of union officers here. Well, this is the room where General William Tecumseh Sherman set up his headquarters in May of 1864. So this character right here is supposed to depict uh, Sherman. This would have been after the Battle of Chickamauga and the Battle of Ringgold Gap. And this is the very room where Sherman planned out the, uh, the attack on Atlanta. Walking out of the living room, uh, this area right here would have served as the original dining room of the house. So this is where uh, the different officers and soldiers that were occupying this house may have had their meals. Now here's something that's really interesting. This church pew 
came from the city of Dalton, and there was a church there that served as a Confederate field hospital. And right here, let me adjust my lighting. If you look, you can still see some of the blood stains. Now, as I mentioned before, this house also served as a Confederate field hospital. Uh, this room was originally a food prep room, so you wouldn't have a kitchen inside the house because there was a danger of it, you know, burning the whole house down. So they would cook outside and then do their prep inside. Well, this particular room was a surgery ward. And you can see they've kind of recreated that in here. And uh, as always, you look at these tools and they just look absolutely horrifying. There's a bone saw right there. Our, our guide told us that a good surgeon could saw through an arm or a leg in about 30 seconds. All right, getting ready to go upstairs here. And you can see that uh, steps have definitely seen a lot of wear. All right, making my way upstairs now. Now, uh, at the Battle of Chickamauga, there is a Confederate general by the name of John Bell Hood who was shot in the leg there and had to have an emergency amputation right there on the battlefield. Well, after that battle, he survived, and they brought him to this very house in this room. So this room right here is where John Bell Hood recovered from his battlefield injury. So here's a picture of Confederate General John Bell Hood, and they have this mannequin with one leg, kind of showing the likeness of Hood after his amputation. And uh, he, he got right back in the game after he recovered and still, still served out in the war. Uh, as a matter of fact, Fort Hood is named after him, and he recovered right here in this room. How crazy is it? that General Hood and General Sherman both occupied the same house and then would be going right up against each other later in the war for the Battle of Atlanta. Hey, look, they also have some indoor plumbing here, minus the plumbing. Now, I mentioned how John Bell Hood had his leg amputated on the battlefield. The soldiers that were with him uh, ended up bringing the leg with John Bell Hood here to the field hospital because the type of injury that he had sustained was usually fatal and they wanted to be able to bury all of John Hood no matter where he ended up dying. But John Bell Hood lived and they still had his leg preserved. So they decided to bury the leg right here. This is the final resting place of the right leg of John Bell Hood. All right, well that was pretty cool. It's not every day that you get to see a Confederate field hospital and the headquarters of one of the most famous Union generals of all time. And to get to see them both in one place, that's pretty amazing. And we saw the grave of John Bell Hood's leg. So anyway, yeah, pretty cool place. I'm, I'm glad that we stopped here today, right here in Ringgold, Georgia. All right, we're off to the next place. <laughs>